the Levels Network. I am Justin Hoddle, joined by the Triple OG, Woodenby Mason. OG, I want to start this episode a little bit differently. So, uh, last episode had a bit of a crack yeah. uh, at, at the team, the area, playing Wakey in the Challenge Cup this weekend, and I butchered their name. So, not only did I have a crack at them, right, right, uh, right. I think I called them, I think I called the town Sedell. Yeah. It's uh, pronounced... Siddle? Siddle. Siddle? Siddle. All right. As in like... like the bowler. Peter, the bowler. The bowler. Fast, medium... Peter Pe- Siddle? Peter Siddle. <laughs> yeah. Pronounced like that. So um, I will not apologise to Siddle because I think the cats are going to tell you up. Easy. Easy money. Cats to I Easy, die. crazy work. Still cats <laughs> to I die, but when I'm having a stab, I wasn't also trying to mispronounce it, your name. Mm. And if you've watched Levels enough, you know that I butcher names from yeah. time to time on this show. Uh, but it was unintentional. All the best to to all the lads playing on the weekend. And I uh, just want to give a massive shout out, Mace. Like we've got so many fans that listen to us from the UK. Uh, and and the reason I love that is because I really enjoyed my time over in the yeah. UK. Uh, I sort of like, I've done a few podcasts and, and uh, you know, some of the stories we tell, whether mm. it be, you know, at whole KR for you or me at Wakey or even our time at France together yeah. where we played in certain love situations. It. Some of the stories might sound like we're taking the piss, but I loved my time. I love it. Even like my whole KR stories. Don't Mm. get it twisted. I Mm. had a fucking ball there. (laughs) Things didn't work out. You can put, I've already told the whole story, so I'm not going to go through it again. Yeah. But the whole whole KR people are great. Yeah. I had a great time there. It was just like six weeks. I wish I would stay there for three years. Things didn't work out. See you later. But we played in the south of France together. I've been on four kangaroo tours over there. Mm. I've been up in, I know the area. I know what the people are like. It ain't my six weeks in whole KR that defines you. Okay, I've got a very big perspective on the whole joint. I love it. Love yeah. the people. Love it. The reason I love it as well, and, and I think one of the, I think it was Henry Turner who uh, messages from Siddell, uh, Siddle was looking for the uh, shout out. Uh, he, he one of his favourite stories is your uh, Batley story too. When we oh, the Batley, <laughs> when we've told the beauty. Batley story, gone and played Challenge Cup <laughs> against them. So the lads are going to be playing in the Challenge Cup. All the best, everyone. Hope you stay healthy. Good luck, boys. Game. Good luck. But I'm on the Cats 100. percent And uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, Footy still, rugby league's still strong there in the north of England. It's, it'll, it's tough. It'll always be strong. It's always it's going to be tough because you've got rugby unions obviously huge there, and um, you got Premier League and boxing and all these other sports. But make sure rugby league doesn't die in the and north of the England. The difference is like because our cap has gone up so much and theirs hasn't. Like back in the two thousands, you could go over there and triple your money because the pound was so strong. You go over there for a hundred thousand mm. Australian or something, you know, you're getting three hundred twenty thousand. Yeah. Worked out well. Now it's not. Now you, know, you get a cap. Buck, you get a buck, buck twenty back here. Yeah, you're not getting much. So the, like the players are trying to stay in the NRL as long as they can because they know the money's good. Mm. You know, minimum wage is one twenty. You know, being on top thirty. You know, I mean, everyone, everyone tries to say the average is four fifty. It's not. It's not four hundred fifty thousand. The average no. wage. And, you know, because you're talking about the top thirty. They blow some it of out. those got. They blow it out. The average. It's not the. It's not the medium. But um, yeah, it's it's probably financially better to stay here. But I always advise the younger players at the NRL in the NRL, you've got to go overseas. It's you've not got to go about overseas. the money. It's the it's lifestyle. Not about, it's the lifestyle. Yeah. It's opening your eyes up. Not many people not many people are gonna go on kangaroo tours and see the whole world. Yeah. You know what I mean? As young kids. That'd they, be they, like one, two percent yeah, that go on those hardly tours. Hardly ever, you know, and they hardly ever tour over England like they do like they used to back in the two thousands. We're over there five times. Mm. But two thousand, two thousand three, four or five. Like it was how, how crazy. Many tours? Did you do three or four tours, you five, five. Rennies? Yeah, five Rennie Matures. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Rennie. Shout Love you, brother. It's Super Bowl week, baby. Yeah. Super Bowl. We are uh, postponing our normal podcast for Monday. Mm-hmm. Just a little heads up. Because we will be on the boat first thing Monday morning, getting around the Super Bowl 58 Kansas City Chiefs versus the 49ers. Holy so shit. we will be filming on Tuesday next week, mate. So apologies to everyone. Oh, I've got a can, a couple of things. I forgot about it. Like I, I trained a couple of like young young little prodigies. Yep. I said, yeah, 10 o'clock uh, Monday. Okay. Oh, that's getting canned. That's canned. <laughs> I'm, on I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. So we will be there um, joining NFL Australia and the tab for the official Super, Party, Super Bowl party. Yeah. On Sydney Harbour. So tickets are on sale right now. All the VIPs are sold out, but there are some still GA tickets and it's going to be pumping, mate. Um, myself, you, Grub's going to be there as well, Josh Reynolds. Um, we've got questions. There's going to be prizes. And I just think it'll be a great vibe. It's a, a great spot to be yeah. watching. No backdooring anyway. Yeah, you can't get you away. Can't back door. You can't backdoor. You can't go do some mentoring <laughs> at 10 a.m., I'll tell you that no, much. No, no, no. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to it. It's going to be a big game. Prediction still, you still happy with I'm your with the Chiefs? Yeah. I have to. You're sticking with the Chiefs? Just because of the 15. Yeah. My homeboy. 
kills he's different. It. He's different. Yeah, he's different. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm still. I'm still 49ers. I love the way the week's gone. I seen a, a great video from Brock Purdy getting interviewed. Mm. So. I don't know if you've, you've – you would have seen it, over, it over the years when uh, players get asked. Uh, I think famously, Amon Ra St. Brown, the Detroit Lions yeah. wide receiver, can remember all 15 wide receivers that were taken in front of him. Yeah. They asked Brock Purdy. They went and interviewed him. He was obviously Mr. the last Irrelevant. pick of the draft, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Irrelevant. And they're like, oh, do you know who the eight quarterbacks – were in front of you that got drafted in front of you and he goes to be honest no oh great that's love, awesome it was so refreshing and he goes um, uh, things happen for a reason I was picked there for a reason I ended up in a great spot and you know that was meant to be God put me there and I just went you know what yeah that's the answer that's I'm sick the of all answer. that I'm sick of that yeah I remember who was yeah. that guy who got picked like number two or something then had to get Rosen Rosen, Josh Rosen was, shut up, dude. Rosen was picked at nine. And he's like, oh, I'm going to get it every yeah. eight quarter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sweet. I think in Not front of him. Even. So, so in that draft, Baker went one. Uh, Sam Darnold went two. Yeah. I think Josh Allen was about seven or six, and then maybe Rosen was like ten to the Cardinals. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to make him pay. <laughs> he <laughs> sure did. Brock son. Purdy. He's Mr. Irrelevant, yeah. and he goes, I couldn't care less who was picked yeah. in front of me. So it just made me love Brock yeah, Purdy like even that. more. And I want I want the 49ers to win, and that sucks. It's a win-win because I like the Niners. I've always hated the yeah. Niners. Oh, the you've no always hated because you're Green Bay. The Niners always knock the Packers out, and I've just always hated them, but it's I can't help the but turn like, against Kansas City. It's just that tall poppy syndrome everywhere, right? Yeah. They're starting to boo them. They're doing those interviews, and they're booing like Kelsey. They're cheering Kittle. Yeah. They're booing like Mahomes. Yeah. Cheering Purdy. It's that underdog, man. But I love greatness as well. Yeah, and that's exactly. I love greatness as well. I'd love to see Mahomes get closer to Brady. So I'm rooting Shanahan, for both Shanahan's quarters. getting bad cheers, yeah. big Red's getting nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I love that coach. I, I, Imagine I, Andy Reid is your coach. Yeah. He'd be <laughs> See his shirt and the way yeah. he dresses? Yeah. Oh, when he wears the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. That, he's got a Hawaiian sort of baby. shirt with KC on it. They've made it just for him. Yeah. Because no one else is rocking that shit. No one can get away with it no anyway. <laughs> and he's got thongs on. Maybe Mike pants. Vrabel can get away because he'll, he'll <laughs> yeah. punch the fuck out of you. All right. I want to give the uh, guys at factorysound.com a massive shout out. If you want to find anything high-end equipment, high-end audio, hit up Jason and the gang at Factory Sound. They're down in Melbourne, but they can deliver anywhere in Australia. They're top-notch. Speaking of going anywhere in Australia, a little mate behind the uh, glass case of emotion there. He's got a big fight coming up, Mace. Yes. He's all locked in. It's on April the 27th. It's in the Gold Coast Convention Centre. We'll obviously be, be up there. If you want to follow it, uh, follow them on Instagram at Alpha Events Co. for all of the updates. But I want to give you an update straight away, mate. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm oh. worried about me little mate. <laughs> Are you really? Why? I don't think he's got that dog in him. Ooh. We talk about dogs all the time, right? So last couple of weeks, we're getting ready, we're training. And you I told this shit, Lukey? And I told him to keep the don't edit this out. Do not edit this out, Lukey. I'm, look, he's been training, he's got his gym stuff, yeah? Good. But he's we're big on this, right? The reason I train with you at the E-Lab on Monday is because you're better than me at it. And I'm always trying to get a little bit better, right? I train with you. I've been trying to get him in some of the runs. You know, I've got a good little uh, rotation system where I do my run swim on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. We've got a Husky try coming up. He's a no-show two, three weeks in a row. This morning he messaged me. Got a sore tummy. Ooh. Ooh. I said, he goes, I don't feel 100. I said, mate, when I wake you up at quarter do. past five in the morning, I never feel 100. We're about but 60. You, you got to get that dog. I said... You sound like David Nofaluma. You got a you got a, <laughs> you got a crook stomach. You can't make training. We can't get a hold of you. You could be Nofer at the Tigers. We, <laughs> we're going to be walking you out, mate. I want you to be raring to go. So, this is a bit of a dig to him. Yeah. My little mate at the back. Start right. ripping in. Start getting your training going. Don't take it personal, Lukey. No, he's good. He's yeah. good. And I told him to leave it in the show. I spoke to Trent Langlings, a great Trent Langlings, yep. this morning, and I yep. said, Lukey Stowe's having a fight. Business partner, levels man. And I said, he's got to do some movement with you. Yep, Hit the pads, sure. do a little bit of sparring because Chang is one of the best, mate, one of the best. So Chang would be perfect. He'd be, um, he's willing to do that, Lukey, so let's get that sorted. We've got plenty of time. It's February Plenty of time. Plenty of time, Lukey. I got your back, 27th. mate. April 27th. Let's, get that, let's yeah. get that dog at him. We need to get that Because he's representing levels. Correct. We're going to be there standing in your corner. I don't want to be thrown in that white towel, man. Don't make me throw in that white <laughs> towel, Lukey, because no you've got way. that quitting. Nah, he's got it. All right, uh, we want to thank everyone who's been following, um, subscribers, all the good stuff. This is, I mention this every episode. I'm repetitive with this because this helps us do what we do. Uh, we got. I want you to go on and subscribe if you're not a subscriber 
on YouTube. Just remember for some of the OGs, some of the old fellas, doesn't cost you anything. Just ask your, ask your son. If, ask you, your if you don't know how to subscribe, go and ask the young fellas. They'll help you subscribe because we've got a lot of OGs that listen to us that don't know that that helps us out heaps. Instagram's flowing. Uh, 28.4K. We're going to get to 30K within a couple of weeks yeah. before we get to Vegas as well. 52,000 on TikTok. Ooh. Flying on TikTok. They loved your chat um, on Monday about, one? about the concussion, okay. about being made for rugby league, Mace. That was flying. That yeah. had 200,000 worth of views or, or even north of that. So got a massive following on TikTok. We really appreciate everyone who follows. And make sure you subscribe on Apple and Spotify as per as well. How are we going on YouTube? YouTube good 20,000 20.8 20.8 20. yeah so we're going good mate remember it only feels like yesterday we were at the mad cow celebrating 10k yeah <laughs> all right let's get to uh, our friends our partners body science bsc energy drinks they're so good talking about getting yeah. that dog and we might have a couple of these in the corners when Lukey's ready to fight too because it's going yeah. to give him a pick me up it helped me yeah. train it at the moment mate, I've, had two I've got already. a great routine uh, I've got a few messages at the moment you know, people really complimenting us on our training we're looking yeah. good we're feeling good we wouldn't be able to do that without the BSC drinks mate um, if you haven't tried them, make sure you do because they're the ultimate solution for boosting focus and mental performance. A clean energy boost to power through your workouts, 160 milligrams of caffeine, no sugar, no carbs. They are That's the That's the key word, clean. It's clean. They're clean, baby. You know, I was speaking to Greg, um, one of the owners from Body Science. I said it's the it's difference between that and the chaos, right? Mm. It's like that is clean. You don't feel it. There's no sugar. There's no nothing like that. Where the chaos is a little bit, you can fucking, ooh. Mm. Get you, you know? get your it's little, little, it's a little bit di different feeling. So it's very clean. Like you feel really focused after and fucking high energy, man. It's crazy. You know the best thing too? Because um, I'm sure this uh, event, boxing event, is going to be taken really seriously. It's has to test it as well. Yeah. The products undergo rigorous testing to meet the highest standards for athlete safety. So yeah. Just like you mentioned, um, it's good to go for Lukey because I'm sure they'll be testing him after they see that rig <laughs> yeah. post fight. They're going to be coming after him. All right, my, mates, man. my man. My man. Your man. Ezra man. Has just re signed till 2029. Six years. Six of the best. Oof. I thought he was going to get a little two or three year kiddies ones and then get up after that. Yeah. But he's, they've prioritised him, mate. Well deserved. Yep. Well played. He's the future of that club, man. He's the future of the club. Like Reynolds is going to be there. Like he's going to be mentoring him and all that kind of stuff. You know, Reynolds is probably signed for another – I think he's looking for another two-year extension. Yeah, I think they're going to extend Reynolds and by the sounds of it, it's going to be club friendly. It's going to be an OG's – yeah, trying to trying to build. Obviously, they've lost some big players, but they've been able to keep Ezra now, Paddy Carrigan, Payne Haas. Yeah, um, got the nucleus of the team. They've got a good nucleus. Katoni Stags is still on good money, so now Reynolds will take a little bit less to keep Ezra, yeah. and there's still one more domino to fall there, though, isn't there? Yes, I don't know. It's, uh, I, 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 love, I love Ezra. Do you know who I'm talking about the fullback? Yeah, Walsh. Yeah, Walsh. It's hard, yeah, it's hard yeah. to get him. Like, what is what is he going to demand? He's got to be mil. Mil plus, easy. Yep. Like if he if he starts if he starts a year off like he should, like like he wants to, like he's gonna be that's your main dude. I don't think he's gonna do do? start the no, 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 like no, no. I think he, he, could, do his, he could get injured and yeah. he's still gonna get that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Touch what he doesn't, but I want him to come out of the blocks like bang. He's gonna be the most like he's the face of the game. Mm. Even KP. Uh, I sent a question on YouTube actually, or maybe it was one on Instagram. Um, with Ezra Ram extending for six, six years. Does he eventually take over Reynolds' spot and become the seven of the club? Yeah, I think so. I think so. If they don't have anyone else, mm. like they've always got someone coming through the ranks there with the Broncos, especially Bronco, Broncos being successful now. It's back to that old glory days, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Everyone wants to be a Bronco again. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Reynolds, but they bought him up there to win a premiership. Mm. Yeah, that yeah, you're right. close. Yeah, he's close. Last year, you know, they're going to – they'll, they'll <laughs> That was fucking – I, Gordy, now, Gordy come out and said something interesting. Oh yeah, well, I'm going to quote said? him. He said something about Reynolds. They, they did buy him up there to win a premiership, all these little things and like about the, the money and all that sort of shit. That's all right. Reynolds would know that expectation. He knows, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have that team that he did last year. Yeah, they've dropped their – yeah, they've lost They the don't few. have it. Like last year was their year. I think they just come fully back to the pack now with the Flegler loss, Palacia well, loss. What do you think they're going to have a major drop-off? They're not going to be as dominant as they were last year. Yeah, okay. No way. Okay. Who knows Walsh is going to replicate that season. He had a Dally M season. He just got suspended and then he was out True. of the race. He, he had he had his Dally, career best. They all did. Flegler did. The difference when young kids have career best years, it's like 
they're still ascending, which is... They, I, know, expect, they, I expect the exact same. But, yeah. I mean, injuries can happen to key players. Yeah. They can fall off. Form can fall off. You know what I mean? Like, little th things can happen. You need a perfect year to get to a premiership 100%. and to win. Nothing's And they had the, everything last year. Everything went good. They, there was Including an 80-point lead. Yes. They had everything going for them in that one game and they still managed to lose it. Fuck. So, like, that could be that game. And then, and then they lose, like, three or four starters, right? You got Capel out, Flegler... Herbie Palacia, out of your grand final team. Mm -hmm. Very important pieces. Who do you replace you him with? Well as well? Cape, well, yeah. yeah. Who do you replace him with? Well, we'll, well then, find no, out. yeah. Well, not not that, not those players. Yeah. We'll and I just out. think I just think they just the, the drop off will be bigger than you think. Well, uh, congrats, to Ezra Man. Secured Ezra the Man, bag. six years, mate. Deserve secured the bag. Cash money. Well mate. done. He's a future Origin Australian player. Massive raps to you, mate. Well done. All right, mate. Let's get into some YouTube questions. These ones are more uh, the fans helping us out. So shout out to Andrew Kwan, uh, 1792. Oh, 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 Loka. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to pronounce this as best as poss possible. Oh, Loka Tua is the young player Willie was talking about from the Roosters at the start of the potty. Mm. Strong lad who scored a try. That was Spencer Lenu-esque. Was out there at Belmore and looks a good one. By the way, Mace, mm. in brackets, he's a Queensland junior. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he is. We're out for near Logan or something like that. He's just been ragged on everyone. He's got a couple, they've got a couple of really good kids out there. Jake Friend's their coach. Well oh, coached. Is he? So I saw Friendy before the game. I was talking shit. Talking I was like, we're going to touch you guys up. And then they got us, but whatever. <laughs> They're going to be well coached. They're, They're well coached, yeah. So yep. Friendy's a real he's, – he's, he's all about work ethic and energy and um, energy and detail, all that kind of stuff. He's been well coached by Robbo and, and some um, Brian Smiths and all that kind of stuff. So, And he's, a, he's one of the greats at that Legends club. of the club. You know, and yep. the game as well. Like yeah, he's, a, sure. he's a legend. So he's, well a, he's a very underrated oh, yeah, part very, of their Mate, he's only success. slept on because of Cam Smith just mm. kept playing for 30 years. Otherwise, he would have had about 10 origins. And he had more, heaps of stars in his team. And so yeah. he was like sort of the sixth, seventh best player. But you can see player. how it meant to him yeah. because they made him captain. Co-captain, right? Yeah. When I was at the Roosters, they sacked him, and he was he was making chick, um, chicken right. sandwiches during That's the year, right. uh, during the week because like he did something off the field, yeah. And then um, you end up getting his start back, and then getting back in the like, so the journey that he's been on has been great. I'm so I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Got he got his, his career Champion got knocked fella. a little bit early. He was 31, but won three premierships, played 250 games, played Origin, played a Test, nothing else. Even though I do question it, it was against Scotland, but I'll give it to him. <laughs> You couldn't just leave that <laughs> Love you, friendy. Uh, love you, friendy. And more importantly, <laughs> Ooh, yes. he's a great person to have a beer with. Best too. bloke in Just the like world. that. That was that was sounded yeah. like cracking a beer, so that was perfect timing. But this is a perfect time to let everyone know, too. We're going to be chatting about the Roosters staff. So not only do they have ex-players, yep. Jake Friend, uh, Boyd, Boyd Cordner, Boyd, Brett the... Morris involved in the staff. They've got another special uh, – not special, but a guy that's been there before in the past and had success, so we'll mention that in a bit. And, Mace, I mentioned Queensland Juniors because Madge had some comments this week, uh, yesterday, and it was regarding skipper James Tedesco. So Ooh, we'll get to that after okay. the questions. Uh, another one uh, – this one's from Homo4112. Um, ben Takura. Is the Broncos' young gun six yeah. nine? Told you, man. One hundred and twenty two of the best, and still only nineteen. I ended up having looking into him after I shout out to Homo for helping us out with. Thanks, uh, Homo. <laughs> thanks for letting <laughs> us know who the young gun is, and apparently he's going to be part of the trials. And Kevy, yeah. is, he's a big chance of playing this. Well, year. Kevy's already come out and said mm. it. Like he goes, he's, he's going to be part of he'd be big part of the NRL this year. I'm like, 6'9", is that too tall for the NRL? I want to see what his leg speed's like. I want to see what he's like. I'd love to see what, what he's like over 40 metres. Mm. Like, even those just little L drills that you do, like with the NFL, a couple of little things that um, you'd love to see. Nice he must be feet. able to – yeah, he's got to have short feet because he's, he's a big boy. i just love to see how he moves at marker and stuff like that, under fatigue. All these little things are going to come in. You know, he's 19 years old. He's obviously big and athletic. They've got big wraps on him. Now, Kevin wouldn't be saying he'd be part of the NRL if he could not play. 100%. Not you know in what trials. I mean? Not in trials or anything yep. like that. So he's got some really good guys like Payne Haas that he can learn off because Payne's a big boy. But 6'9 is a little bit – that's massive. Well, he would be – That's the biggest ever. He would be the tallest guy in NRL ever. history if he was to play. So yeah. that's uh, – So I just want to see how he moves. Yeah. Because – and, you know, you run into Victor Radley – He's smacking you straight in the nuts. That's yeah. where his shoulder is, or in the guts, or something like that. It's it's the, those body types. Yeah. The Jake Trebojevic's, the Cam Murray's, I tell you, young young Takura, yeah. don't run at them. Yeah, because they're going to get you Find really the big good. Fellas. Find the big boy. Yeah, so he can hit you up top. 
Yeah, I'm with you. Even with me being 6'3", I like even guys like Little Nuggets, like a Mitch Kenny. Yeah, don't run at him. Like Mitch Kenny's hurt, probably about five ten quads, quads and hips, maybe and five ten at best. But yeah. he get right underneath and just yeah. jam you. Even like a Le- don't run at Leota. Yeah, Le- he'll Leota, put you, of course. He'll put you straight in the ground like a stapler. He'll be like a big stapler. Yeah, but I think I think Leota's obvious. Yeah. But like with a guy like Mitch Still Kenny, a guy like that would. But Leota's one of those guys. He can sort of hide in the line. They're all like just the Penrith boys. Like they're fish, not super fish tall, and Leota. They? They're not massive. Yeah. And so if if you see Kenny, Leota, and Fish, who are you going to run at? And then, and even Yo, Yoey yeah, can Yowie get you can as well. Yeah, like, Yowie, like, Yowie just fucking wraps you around like you. Yeah. Scotty Sorensen. That's, why they're, that's why they're so good. Their middles are fucking unbelievable because they all work hard. They all hit hard. It's like, ooh, who do I pick? Pick Kenny. Bang, on your back. If this kid can become anything, with the emergence of a guy like Xavier Willison as well. Mm. Would that help negate the sort of the questions you have with Tom Flegler moving on as well? Yeah, like if they be. get a couple of Wilson, need, Wilson needs to be that dog. He needs to come off the bench and be that be that guy mm. and push push Jensen for yeah. that starting spot. Like yeah, you okay. need, they need to do that. Like to, he's got that uh, potential. Fleg, but Flegler's been around for like what four or five years up there, right? He's just yep. he's just four. and yeah. he was injured a couple of times. He didn't finish his um, season, but he played Origin two years ago. So it wasn't this is this wasn't his first year in Origin. So he's played yeah. Origin before, but it's the first time he got picked in the Test team. Yes, correct. Right, so <clears throat> that says a lot. But he was always ascending like that. You know, to lose him right now because I don't think he's peaked. Yeah, all of those young kids come through together at the same time, basically. Mm. Payne Haas, Tom you know, Flegler, Paddy and, Carrigan. But one of them had to miss out, and yes. Flegler would have got about they've eight, all ascended to superstars man. in the game now. Yeah, and if Flegler so, can take his reputation to even another level yeah, if he is he's, able to replicate that at the Dolphins. Because as I said, like he just had to do, do his job there. He's got to do a little bit more at the Dolphins. Now he's the dude. You're Payne Haas, you got Carrigan. Yep. You know what I mean? You had Capewell, you got Ricky, and then he was just part of that big puzzle that they've got up there, big, strong, mobile guys. Now he's going to be the dude there. Mm. Cause got some good this, OGs, Yeah, got good money, but I reckon him and Gilbert, I'm really excited yeah, like about him. Gilbert. Yeah, I, I like love it. Gilbert. I reckon Gilbert's going to be a player. Him and Flegler through the middle. They're going to win games. Jesse, Bromwich, Kafusi, both the Bromwiches. Come they're on, going to bash teams. On, I'm pick. telling you now, it's they're going, going to bash awful. teams into potentially making the yeah. eight. I can see that from the Dolphins. Yeah. I just couldn't quite put them in there, but we'll get to predictions at the end of the show. All right, this one's from Phil Plug. Hey, lads, loving the pods. In regards to a potential replacement for Lenyu, there's a player called Ati Valu Lasati who during the off-season seems to be performing really well. He's been a part of our system for a while and close friends with Fish and Moses, which helps too mm. you, when the OGs are mentoring you. It goes yeah. a long way. Also a young kid called Luron Patea. Patea. Apologies again uh, to the Pacific Island boys if I've messed that one up. But uh, who is very like for like with Spencer and played in the under-19s origin last season for oh, New South that's Wales. Good. That's what you're looking for. And actually stood out like coming off the bench. Yeah. So he, he that's was what a real impact. For. So shout out to Field Plug for the shout out. Didn't, we didn't know who the young guns were, but we both knew that there's some. There's got to there's got to be there. like to let you know players like that go of that caliber. Obviously, you got to have someone in your ranks. Yeah, you just know, when like, you think it's over in the outside backs, Taruva comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Just when you think it's you know like it's they lose stop. they lose uh, Matty Burton and Stephen Crichton. Uh, the male is too, by the way. A lot of people think Appy. they're with you. On you know we talked about uh, Taruva and Taylor May. Mm. Apparently the May is uh, the male is Taylor May centers. Yeah, everyone seems to be of that opinion. So we were discussing that last episode. But everyone, knew, like, I didn't know that Taruva had such soft, soft hands. Everyone mm. was saying that he's got silky hands, right? Well, I just think naturally playing because fullback, fullback you got to have. Them. Yeah, but I think maybe the body shape, like you alluded to yeah. right at the start. Thicker body defensively, mm. um, or there could be a battle. And, and we, look, we didn't mention in the clip, but Paul Alamotti would have to be thereabouts as well. He's not going there to play reserve grade the whole year, yeah. is he? Yeah, you know, he's going there to go over there and learn, learn his craft a little bit more, get coached, play with better players, all that kind of stuff. That's why he would have went there. He didn't go for more money. All right, here's one from Samson seven seven nine six. Cheers for the potty, my Usos. Willie, Justin, and Lukey, absolutely loving it. My dad was a massive fan of Widamu Mason and once got his doggy's jersey signed by Mace, yourself, and the great SB Dub, which he then always wore when he was in Belmore. I have a question <laughs> for you, Mace. What was it like having Folksy as a coach? He always seemed so effortlessly cool and calm and wondered whether that was the same at training and in the sheds. Yeah, he was like that all the time. There was not much to him. You know, like just say football-wise, coaching-wise, X's and O's. He knew what sort of team we had. He was just all about defense, all about attitude, discipline, all those little Culture. things. Fucking playing as hard as you can for that jersey because he was part of that original Dogs of War. Mm. You know what I mean? So we all just wanted to impress him. Yep. And he didn't say shit. 
You know what I mean? Like he'd say a couple of little cheeky things like here and there, Mad Monday and something. Like I'd say, I reckon we could fucking – I'd say some shit to him about like his dog's war. Because like, got, we got anointed <laughs> by the old school dudes like Peter Kelly and that they went, these guys are the new dogs of war. Yeah. I said, we'd fuck you up, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little things like he goes. Yeah. Then he just fucking – he did turn, no way, we'll get you, man. I like, oh, I got him, I got him. But um, his demeanour – was was perfect for some of the shit that we went through. A few mis- few misdemeanors 22, from the guys. 22, like, 23, 24. Yeah. Man, he had a very fucking loose <laughs> side. Yeah. And he handled it all. Yeah. Right? But we had a very strong playing group. Um, but him as a coach, he, he knew – like it was very – like oh, how do I explain it? Just say Can before, I, can before I throw it, something yes, here? Yeah. We'll circle back to what we talked about. You know, we're talking about Ivan Cleary and, and Wayne in particular. Yeah. Guys that you – know, like you said, he probably wasn't the best X's and O's coach that you had mm. over the years, but – Man, management, understanding yeah. culture, and understanding personalities. It sounds like he was the grouse. Yeah, of that. like he, he would. He never overcomplicated the game. Mm. Compared to other coaches that I've had, I'm like, wow, this is the game's not that complicated because I was playing probably played my best football at the Dogs. Mm. The only thing he used to say to me before the game was, I'd be getting a massage and he'd go, lead the lines, lead the line speed, set the standards, couple of couple, two, th- three things in yep. my head. That's Simplify it. it. Then I'd get up and just whatever. So there'd be never anything like this and go in the meeting and fucking talk for about 10 minutes, all that sort of shit. Be fuck all, be safe. A few things to some key players that are all in key positions that are important to what, to to, to win, right? He'd say that. And then that's it. Hmm. After the games, he'd celebrate a little bit, nothing too much. That's why we'd celebrate, but it wasn't crazy like that, you know? You do the celebrate a little bit later with Yeah, but like, folks, you knew that he had a fucking wild team, right? So he didn't need to. There'd be little things like, uh, we play on a Sunday, got a short turnaround Friday. Um, Most of us were young and we're like, we live in the moment, we want to celebrate, right? And I like it. He didn't then there was talk, and he didn't drink when he played. Yeah. He didn't eat McDonald's. He didn't do anything like that. So he had a bunch of like just like this new generation of myself and Rennie and Sonny Bill and and uh, Willie Tonga, Big Marco Mealy. Yeah. Like it was just like Matt Utai, like all yeah. these all He's these a, a melting break. pot, brave, shifty Corey <laughs> yeah. Hughes, yeah. a melting pot of people. They were all Bulldogs people. The only two people that we bought were Marco Mealy when he was twenty and Luke Patton. Yeah. That was it when they were twenty years old. Everyone else has come through the system. So just say we'd, we'd play on Sunday and it'd be a great win. Just say at Penrith or something like that and we had to play Friday. Short turnaround, no? you can't have a beer. We're like, well, you're, you're delaying the inevitable. I said, because if you, we'd uh, just say on Sunday and then Monday we'd have Tuesday off. We're going to like, you might as well let us drink on Sunday yeah. so we can be all right on the Monday. And the, you know, otherwise, we're going to drink <laughs> on Monday. Otherwise, we're going to have a beer on Monday. Yeah. And I'm talking, you're not talking two or three players. You're talking 16, 17. Oh, no, apart from Pricey and, and Hazem. Mm. They didn't drink. Imagine players doing that now. These like we'd say, that, I said to the, I said, well, you're just delaying the inevitable. <laughs> I said, you might as well let us drink. Because like yeah. Sunday nights in the fucking, on a su- Sunday in Sydney in the 2000s, you serious? Yeah. Ravisi, Sapphire, like all that shit was crazy. And it was just yeah. the vibe. And it was like, there's none of this shit. Yeah. No one was worried about anything. Yeah. Someone would come pick us up in the cross at like eight o'clock to go to the medical at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> like that was just, yeah. And like yeah. folks, you go, yeah. as, long, like, as long as you didn't drive to training. Yeah. Right? Train hard, bro. Just train yeah. hard. Go yeah. out there, train your fucking hardest. And he knew that because mm. that was that sort of culture. You yeah. fucking drink hard, play hard, train hard. And Obviously, all that shit's gone. Too, all that stuff's weekend. gone. Yeah. But he knew the culture, right? Yeah. And he just went – because we just w- were ripping in all the time on the field, off the field, at training. No one was – like, you know, like you had a few misdemeanors off the field. But, like, he fucking managed us because yeah. there was a lot of egos there, but we didn't play that sort of football. There was no egos when we played. It was very well balanced. We had a very good team there. You talk about the names there, I'll just drop. Marco Mealy, Steve Price, Rosa Tassi, Sonny Bill, Randy Matua, Willie Mason, through. Andrew Ryan, all in one pack. Yeah. And no one was no one was about numbers or anything like that. Mm. Stat men. It was probably Pricey. Pricey yeah. and Ogre. Fucking yeah. two front rows. That's the only guys that cared about front stats. Front rows love stats. They love their stats. Yeah. All front yeah. rows love stats. Everyone else didn't give a shit as long as we won Because you know what? At the end of the day too, like they probably get judged harder than anyone on yeah. stats front rows. Yeah, but like he was great con- considering when, you, when I just dropped all those names the, and the fucking – and we were in our prime of like life, right? Mm. Off the field, life. on the field, and it's like things were peaking and it was fucking crazy and he still managed to go – he didn't put any pressure on us. It was like you had a couple of little serious meetings with him. Like, when they come in here, this is, you fucking pull your head in, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right. And then like, because he knew I had my influence over the younger guys because you fucking stop doing what you're doing. I'm like, he goes, because you can do it. I could do 
off field stuff, still control on the field. Yeah, and yeah, train right. and do that. He goes, he goes, these guys can't do it. Some of them, you know? Yeah, some can't. Some I'm can't. like, okay, well, fucking hell. I just thought everyone could do that. Like, well, we're just built like that. <laughs> All right, let's keep her on the theme. But of- God rest his soul. God bless him. He was one of the biggest influences in my life in, in rugby league. Yeah, I went to school with his um, with his son. I met him. I was lucky enough to meet him a couple of times. He's a great fella. Um, let's keep on front rowers. Let's keep on the big boys. Mm. And I want to ask your. Potential. This is a question for me, but I'll throw it to you first. This is from Zachary Smith. Question for Scope. I'm a manly tragic as well. Do you think Mount Paseca of ten, of the Taniella variety can be one of the elite front rowers in the game? Yeah, I do. I've had big raps on him for two or three years. I've uh, slid into his DMs and given him a few little tips here and there and what he needs to work on. And he seems seems to be what working be, on him. What would be your one thing that you want to you want? Taniello he just needs to, to use his size. He's six foot six and 120 kilos, and he can move. Mm. He should be unstoppable he's, in this game. He's so nice, man. You should be – yeah, stop being so nice. Mm. Run at spaces, not faces, little bit of footwork, offload, pre-line passing, add, add a string to your bow every year. Yep. Be more aggressive in, in defense. Start hitting like a six foot six hundred and twenty kilo player should. He should be taking Payne Haas's fucking – he should be taking him on, taking um, Tino on, all those guys. He should be going for their throne this year. He got derailed last year because of an injury. Mm. Because he come out of the blocks against us round one. He was really good. Couple of line breaks, clean line breaks, yeah. clean straight through the front door. Uh, he's got he's got all the tools, all the tools to be a premier front rower. Yeah. Not not just your average. I'm talking like Australian jersey, and New South Wales jersey. That's yeah. how much of a rap I have on him. He yeah. just needs to be consistent, yeah. week in week out. Get that dog in him, go after him. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you, mate. I I think probably Taniella and maybe look. It, it takes it's a full team effort to win a competition. Yeah, you need. Your stars like Tommy Travoy, which is obviously huge. Mm. If Tommy plays, I'm looking at the draw for Manly and I've got high expectations for Manly this year. I love the young ascending players that are coming through. But He's that they dude. need a front – they're just like a few other teams that I have my question marks on. They've got good front rowers. A bit like the Sharks for me where I, they've got good front rowers. Yeah. I don't think they have great front rowers. Yeah. And this is a bit of a challenge as well. And, um, yeah. and I was never a great player myself like you, Mace. But watching the game now, breaking down the game – I, a system to, to make my top eight this year, what I did was we talked about our priority positions. So what mm. I went through and looked at, I did a number system to figure out what my top eight was this year and I rated all the best players from uh, positions fullback, mm. six, seven. Right. One front rower, who's your dog? Yeah. Who's, your, who's your leader in your pack? Uh, nine and 13. So I had three in the forward pack, three in the backs and then that's how I figured out my top eight. I did a point system. And I'm maybe, I, I, know, I, I get it. I'm, with, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of there as well. Like if you've got a good front rows, a top if you've got a, a top five front row, one of them, right? Just say one of them. You've got a Fanua Blake and yep. then you've got a decent halfback in the top five. And you got a, like a fullback in the top five. Chance Nick Clark. There you one. go. Like yeah. I'm I'm like, you should probably make the eight. When you look at this system and how I broke it down, I'll show it to you. I might even reveal it to the people how I did yeah. it. Yeah. Um the the rankings are very personal to anyone who might do them. But I dare say a lot of people would agree with my rankings between maybe you could slide up two positions, maybe slide down two positions. But when I went through the teams, Turbo, top five fullback when fully fit, I had him at two. Obviously, Ches, number two behind mm. Nath. Um, I looked at Lachlan Croker. Uh, he decent. was he was He was solid. He was a little bit further down in the nines. Um, There's some good nines in the game. Jakey Travojevic, sort yeah. of, he's about mid-range now. Jakey at this point of his career. And Taniella was further down the line when I, t- when I talk about front rows. So if he's able to jump maybe five to six spots, which he's capable of. A couple of, of rumours, hey, he might be playing Origin. That, he needs to be in that conversation. He needs to be in the Oluquatu conversation. Yes. Well, he's knocking on the but door. But even like Stefano from West Tigers. Yes. I think that Taniella has got more upside than him. And he's played Origin. That's big call. Yeah, I, yeah, like, like, I, I, like, I like him better than uh, Stefano. Okay. I'm, and I like them both. Yeah, same. I just think Pasek has got – like he's fucking bigger and like he's faster and he's and he looks fitter like when he's all when he's going. But like – No, I reckon Stefano's fitter. That's reckon? The, that's the thing that I – with Taniella, I think his aggression is sometimes a, a they're fabric. They're on par. They're, they're very even. It's I a, like them both. It's a fabric of him being a little bit gas sometimes. So he doesn't – I think he sort of plays conservatively sometimes in the sense where he's not running out of the line trying to jam anyone because he's fucking 125 fucking kilos. He does that for 10 rounds. He get picked in origin. He's six foot six. But if he front loads and goes hard and builds that engine, right. then I think he's got – I saw him when we – First potential. round last year and I walked past him like, he's a fucking giant. Mm. 
If he's on, he's destroying us. And he was on, and he destroyed yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's from Troy Rogers. Hey, boys, love the potty. As a Roosters fan, watching the OG as a young 10-year-old was my favorite part of my weekend back in the day. Tell you what, we got a, there's a lot of throwbacks of people loving the OG back in the day. <laughs> Thoughts on how overlooked do you think the Roosters signing of Justin Holbrook to the Roosters coaching staff is? Roosters' problem last year was attack, which is one thing – Titans never had a problem with mm. opinions, boys. Well, this is how overlooked it was. Like, I didn't even know that he was part of Either the squad. <laughs> That's how overlooked. Either did but I. No, no, there was no like, I don't know, because I've been off been off social media, but you're on social media. You didn't even really know. Yeah, look, I think over the off season, you know, it would have been uh, a signing that would have been probably in the They probably would have signed him when it was a coaches, team. you don't get as much fanfare about assistant I coaches. I think he's going to be a great assistant coach. I think he's a perfect job. He's had a great relationship with the Roosters and with Robbo, and he's a great attack coach. Mm. It's all if he's sticking to the attack, he doesn't have to do the defense and the whole coaching and the man management, management and all that sort of shit. Titans could always score points. Yeah, man, always. <laughs> <laughs> fucking now you got Roosters can defend. Yeah. So if he can get Sam Walker to where they want him, that that whole spine. If, as I said, if they click, they're going to be like premiership nearly favourites mm. in my eyes. I just mm. think – They've got think, predictions They've got on. predictions, yeah. I just think they've got that – that back line is ridiculous. The halves, the forwards, like the whole squad is – iron sharpens iron. They've got about 22 players that fit into – set. Like they only pick 17. Yep. Most clubs can only pick about at 14, 15. 16, yep. 17 – you just you're waiting for the trials. That's the difference between the top tier teams. Yeah, so they've got twenty three. They got twenty. You need about you need about 27, 28 first grade players. Yeah, going all you know you need about all of them going for them bench spots, the bench going for the starting spots, and that's what creates greatness. Yeah, you know. But most clubs down the bottom they don't have that. You can pick a starting thirteen, and you're like, fuck, who's going to be our bench? You know, you got to wait for these trials. That's why this week the trial games, you're trialing a lot of first graders. Mm. Yeah, you got to find a out lot. if they are. First You're like, are you that dude? Are you that dude? Where are we going to play? You're going to play 14, you're 13, you're going to play 12. Can, can you, you play? Give us 30 can good you give minutes? us? Can you get it? Yeah, can you get me 12, 25, 30 in the middle? Mm. Can you start a game for us? Even at this level where you're playing against like not the highest level like guys now, this is all like the guys that are probably. You're probably going to have a couple of guys that come back from injury this week and yeah, then a lot of guys, guys are playing a lot of reserve young grade, young guys, you know, a few few first graders chucked in there yep. and just see how you go. Yeah, You know, like Looking a kid might, might, be, too, yeah, eh? might be injured last year, come back, give me 40. You know, so it's good. It's always – the trials now, they're fucking – they're games. Coaches are looking at this as going, I, these are not like trial games when we were trials. Like we already had our like kind of 16, 17. We already like we'd already have that already fixed. It'd be like maybe one or two if they fucking killed the trials and there was injuries. Mm. That's the only way you were getting in our side. Yeah. Now back to Robo, I mean uh, Holbrook just quickly. Great. One, he's been a part of the system for all, before, yes. which yeah. helps before he went over to the Super League. I be, I'm not too sure if he was in the 13 GF system, but I know he was a part of the team for a couple of years, at least before he went to St. Helens. Did you know I played with Justin Hopper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how old I am. With the dogs in 98, played reserve grade when I was coming through. What's his nickname? Titsy. Titsy. Oh, Titsy. Yeah. Um, he's a Bulldogs junior. Yeah. Great human. Great human. I was glad, he, you know, he killed it over there. I just think, you know, they just didn't react to the way that he was coaching up there. Yeah. That was all. They he didn't still buy in. He's still, there's, there's still a massive place. He, mm. He's still got a, 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 big, a big coaching future. Great human. You know, so he just apparently there's some you know some off field bullshit up there. He doesn't deal with that kind of crap. Well, it's, it's just it's just the younger guys. It's been a problem up in the Titans for a it while. It wasn't the players. There's a lot of you know. Okay, all a right. Lot of administration. Okay, put it that way. All right. This next question is from Houston Nan, and it's about administration. It's about the 18th team, Mace. Uh, questions here from a true <laughs> Kumul. Sorry. Go, go, go. No, no, go. go. <laughs> you going to say something 200,000 members. Want to hear, say. Want to hear, Mace. Oh, 200,000 members. Is that the uh, the Bears? Yeah. That's 200,000? Well, this one's about PNG's members. Yeah. I uh, want to hear Mace's thoughts on PNG's push to the to be the 18th NRL team. Personally, I don't think we're ready. Just want to get your thoughts on this. Love the potty boys. Haven't missed a minute of an episode since day dot. Houston, shout out Houston. Nice. Thanks, Houston. And all the love from PNG. I've been a big advocate for – for the PNG um, game, and I think they're ready for it, right? Oh, okay. You just can't have them sit, situ- have them in Papua New Guinea twenty four seven. Yeah, it just won't happen. What three, they, four they games could be, there though? You could have four games in New Guinea, four games in Redcliffe or Suncorp, and be based in just somewhere like Rockhampton, Bundaberg, or something like that, mid mid Queensland. 
Okay, yeah. So I, you can have I a strong have a stronghold point. in that in that sort of central Queensland. Four games up there, four games down in, in Queensland and all the rest of the away games. Yeah, okay. That's the only way you can do it. So they're not going to be living in New Guinea or anything like that and transit, trans, transiting all the time. Yep. It's too much travel for the guys. They need to be based in Rockhampton or Bundaberg or something like that. I know that the Bulldogs have been taking games to Bundaberg yeah, and a lot of other teams. There so, there year, is yeah. a, so there is a massive, massive amount of people that follow the game up there. Yep. Infrastructure's already there. They're building a new stadium. So like, like things might be happening in that. In that case... Financially, everything is set. Yeah. The New Guinea, every everybody's at the just go- government ties. The government, every, everything, everything is um is ready to roll. It's just whether whether the game, the NRL goes, gives it the nod and goes, okay, well, this is how it's going to work. Well, they were heavy favourites, I'd say, probably before Christmas when we were talking about it. Now I've seen the interview with Peter Valanis just recently with Buzz. There's talk about North Sydney Bears and the Bears franchise basically maybe being uh, re- relocated. relocated. I feel like maybe Perth's the favourite at the moment. Yeah, fuck. I don't know. They did a coach's poll and apparently Perth was like maybe 60, 70%. Why do we want to go to Perth? Just because I just think just because we get sixty thousand, just because we get sixty thousand to an Origin game, like everyone goes Origin. You can fucking hold the thing in Papua New Guinea. You get sixty thousand. I think you it's get a hundred market in Perth. I think Perth's going to be just be booming. Like when we talk, I've more my mates speak about real estate and that over there. They reckon it's booming in Perth. So. Um, more the population. Traveling, the travelling would just kill you. I yeah, Luke, he's got something for us. Yep. The number of teams they want to play in the twenty. Well, so Luke, you just said in the interview with uh, with Buzz with Valandis, uh, he's speaking to Nick Politis. Is uh, Nick Politis? Did you say? No, yeah. And another yeah, another good businessman, and the number is twenty. So not only will they go to eighteen, there's a good ch- chance PNG are for sure part of the, the plan yeah. for twenty. Oh, well, Perth's got to be. Perth has to be yep. north. The Bears have to be. They just relocate somewhere. Do you know? Like, I think Central Coast needs a team. Come on, Central Coast is a good stadium. It's, it's, a, it's got a stadium there. It's the just people, too many teams in New South Wales. The pe- the I, know, I, know, I understand, but the people love rugby league on the Central Coast. It's like Newcastle. They I love, love it. I used to love playing at Central Coast Stadium. Maybe north, like maybe northern New South Wales. Mm. You know, like somewhere up there, like just before Queensland. Like it could be. Fuck, I don't know, like Maxville or Coffs Harbour or something like that. Like well, Toddy Carney, captain, captain coach Byron Bay. Yeah, of course. Get Toddy, captain coach. Get, get, Pikey, get Pikey involved with Byron Just something, Bay. There's so Shout many options. Pikey. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, these are massive, these are massive big things from the NRL. Big moves, isn't it? Like What's that, mate? What was that, Luigi? The Rivers Bears. The Rivers Bears? Northern Rivers, Northern Rivers, Rivers Bears. Bears. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. Northern Rivers Bears. There's so many Bears. options, you know what I mean? Like just say like Perth, but like, do we have enough players? I think we got players. I think coaching is coaches, being illustrated. Yeah. That. Like when we talk, do, you think we have enough players to get twenty teams? Uh, we, you know, we're going through the stats last episode, mate. So if you haven't seen the episode, go catch the back end of our episode talking about the coaches. Do you see the winning percentage of those coaches? Yeah, that's a shitload of winning for six coaches yeah. in the NRL era. They're all above fifty percent, mm. and that's only six coaches, mate. So mm. what are the other fucking twelve yeah. coaches doing in the league? Yeah, I know they're losing. Yeah, they're under fifty percent. Yeah. So yeah, I, think, I don't know. I think just, it's I'm, just, I'm just worried about the players. I'm not worried about the forwards or anything like that or outside backs. I worry yeah. about the halves, the, the elite positions. Yeah, right? halves would be. That's what I worry about. Mark. You know, you're going to get thrown into the wolves really quick if you're a young, good kid. They should have learned that lesson with Brody Croft and Dearden and all those sort of guys. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. We, we, we do have the players, but we don't. Like, if you speak to all the old school sort of players at my age, they'll be like, no, we don't. Uh, of course. We don't. Yeah. We don't. Because you don't want to saturate the whole product. Yeah. You've got, I don't think you can go to 20 straight away. No. 18, get used to 17 for at least one more year. Yeah. If you want to implement 18, yeah, go 18, but don't go 19, 20 bang Please straight don't. away. When did we have 20? We had 20 in like 96, didn't we? The Optus Cup. Yeah. Was that before was it? it broke before up in the Super League? League? Yeah. 96, yeah. I think. Yeah. 20. And it didn't work, did it? Yeah. And then I think it maybe, I think up. maybe in 98 when they first come back together, there was 20. Was it? And then it, split, then it just kept going down, down, down. South Queensland crushes. Something like that. Gold Coast was still in there. Yeah. Bring back the Mariners. <laughs> hey? Bring Hunter back Mariners. the Hunter Mariners. Oh, jeez. I'll be the coach of that. Oh, jeez. Shout out to Toronto West, too. What's yeah. Up? All right, mates. Here's one for you. I know this is going to fire you up. This is, I know it's, what are we in? February? Early February? Yeah. But 
Michael Maguire was interviewed and they unveiled uh, both squads mm. for New South Wales and Queensland. But specifically, being an ex-New South Wales player, I want you to – I want your comments. I yeah. want your reaction to these comments. New Blues coach Michael Maguire has refused to guarantee incumbent skipper and fullback James Tedesco a place in the New South Wales side for the 2024 series. Now, let me just get this clear. So he was just asked a question about – yeah. Specifically, Teddy, and if anyone is guaranteed a spot, this is his response. I respect all those boys that have been in the past, but I'm telling everyone to look forward. We've got to move forward, Maguire said. I know that he's had a very good preseason, no doubt, like any champion player, he's still a champion player. I'm looking forward to seeing Teddy play some really good footy. At the moment, I'm not going to make any statements around the team. I said that when I first arrived. I want to let the players go and play and then go from there. We'll work out which which way we want to go. I love those comments. So do I. I love those comments because that's that's we've lost the last two, right? Dylan Edwards is coming. Like Tom Chiboyuch is coming back. Latrell Mitchell's coming back. Mm. What if like, you know, what if they all come out at the same time, all playing fullback, right? And they all just fucking come out of the blocks at 100 miles and Tom Turbo's back to 21. You know, Latrell's lost eight kilo. He's showing everyone, I want to be fucking fullback and He's I want to be like good. 20 hit ups, all that sort of it shit. He looks happy. You know, Dylan Edwards just does Dylan Edwards shit. Right? And Teddy just does, you know, he, he crawls out. Like, what do you do? Or what if Teddy comes out of the blocks? Perfect. You know, I want, I want that. You know, you've got Katoni Staggs, you've got all these other guys. They're critter. They're all pushing for the center spots just because, like, Latrell and that killed it uh, a couple of years ago. Mm. Do they slot straight into the center spot? No, I don't reckon that'd be a lot. No, I don't think anything is. And that's mm. the beauty of having a new coach. You've got a, new, you got a whole new brain, you've got a slate. whole new clean slate. Yeah. Understand this, like just because Madge, Madge has his thoughts on that, you still have a board of selectors, right? You know, so like just say you have your team there, someone has a look and goes, yeah, well, Teddy's the captain, blah, 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 let's give him the first game. You know, like that's what happens in – I know that's what happens in New South Wales teams. Do you think selected. Madge is strong enough to go – Madge is strong that? enough, yeah. yeah, but like these other guys have more power. But I'd, 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 if I, you know, look, I understand politics in rugby. It is league. very political, and it's, it's not only New South Wales. It happens at NRL level. Every it happens level, at every level. Every when you're level. A kid. But I have a feeling Madge is going to go. I'm only going to get one shot at this. Yeah. And based off my experience, I like Madge. I've, yeah, I like him. My too. dad's spent some time with yeah. Madge and the Kiwis over the years. I, f I have a feeling he's going to be the sort of guy that's not afraid to make tough decisions. No, he's going to make tough decisions. And I think this will bring out the best. But what happens? Teddy yeah, I think Teddy's under the pump for the first time in his career. And then we'll just see what he's made of. Mm -hmm. He could just be – of course he's going to nail preseason. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's 36 or 30. He's 31. Yeah. I think his he's like body's, he's Yeah. <laughs> mate, he's Let 30. But his body's still oh, in – Oh, you said this the other yeah, day. He's yeah, he's 31. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you his got me His body's the other still in good nick. He yep. needs to come out of the blocks mm -hmm. like Teddy does. Like he's just been – you know, like he hasn't had all the line breaks because he set the bar so high, everyone expects that. It's like Tom Trebojevic. The bar that he set in 21 is – Unattainable. Yeah. For Even anyone. Trell, at Trell's best. And Latrell. Like yeah. so everybody who when you show everyone how great you can play and then you fall short for a couple of years, everyone just judges you on how great you were. It's like you were the unreal here and now you're here. Like it's cause they set the bar so high, these great players. And that's what the greats do, like the Billy Slaters and that Cam Swiss. They'll like that every fucking year for fifteen to twenty. You know what? The more you the more you talk about this, the more this is why Dylan Edwards stands out. Because yeah. Dylan Edwards might not have the 10 out of 10 game that the other boys are capable of, but he gives you eight and nine every single week. All right. And, just, that's, and, and I'm not saying – No, is, okay. This is just thinking about it, right? Like Teddy can have 10. Latrell can have a 10. And not saying that Dylan Edwards can't have a 10, but he's very rarely going to fall below an eight. Mm. And I think just with the form of all three teams, specifically the Roosters, Rabbitohs and Manly – they haven't played 10 out of 10 games all the time like Penrith are playing all the time. No. So that's an advantage, Edwards. But the other players, I think this is going to bring out the best in my so – so I'll go through the squad for you, mate. Um, it's a 36-man squad. A lot of familiar 36 names. 36-man squad. Fuck. There are uh, – the, the, here are the deputants of players that haven't played Origin so far. Campbell Graham, Dylan Edwards, Ken McInnes and Hamali Olakowatu. Yeah. All the rest of the All the rest of Played origin. Yeah, I just think I just want to see the start of the year, and I want to see those fullbacks go at it. Mm. I want to see Teddy come out of the blocks. And then, like, what, what are you gonna What are you gonna do then? What are we? Talking? What are you gonna do when Teddy comes out and just plays what Teddy, how Teddy does, and Dylan Edwards still does Dylan Edwards stuff, mm. but Teddy's back to where he was. What about Turbo's doing Turbo? And stuff? it's Turbo's and doing that. Doing that's stuff. what I'm. That's what I want to see, right? Mm. Iron sharpens iron. They're all gonna go at it, and they all want to play fullback. 
Yeah. They all do. That's the fucking they position. They won't say it out loud. They're not going to say it out loud. They're like, yeah, Teddy's a fullback. Teddy's a captain. Yeah, yeah but if Latrell gets put at fullback, he'll play fullback. Fuck yeah. If Turbo's at fullback, he wants to play fullback. If he's playing his best football, come on. Well, and if Teddy's – just say if Teddy's a little bit down and Turbo's there, I'm picking Turbo at fullback. How excited were we last week when Kalen Ponga come out and said, I want that fullback spot back. Yeah. And Walshy ain't going to step down. No. So we were excited about Walsh versus Ponga. What if the fucking New South Wales players come out and actually say respect to fucking Teddy the yeah. OG's been there, but my possession my best position is fullback. I want to play fullback. If I'm selected to play centers, I'll do my best for fucking New South Wales. But so, I want that fucking number one. So jersey. just say if Turbo finishes his career in five or six years and just say like his best football is behind him, just saying about four or five years, never gets to play fullback for New South Wales. Mm. And he could arguably go down as like one of the greatest fullbacks of, of all time. time. That's what could happen, yeah. right? And yeah. so how old's uh, Turbo? 25? Turbo, I'd say 27. Fuck, is he that old? Yeah, I'd say Turbo's about 27. Yeah, so right. wait. Not that old, geez, but I mean. Um, oh, f- oh, 14 was his first year when. No, 15. When we'll 15, yeah, yeah, it was too, yeah. And he was 18. And he was 18. So do the math. He is 27 mm. and 129 days. Right. Yeah, Big I year don't for know. Turbo. Big year. Big year for Big Turbo. Big year for, for the for match. Huge. Year. He's got a couple of positions. What yep. do you do with hooker? We're going to go through this again. Like yeah. we'll get, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. We'll, There's a couple of really key positions there: the hooker and the six. fullback and the six. Six. All the rest sort of picks itself. Yeah. I'm not really. I'm not really fucking. I don't care. I don't, I don't really care. I, I, I don't really care at fullback. If you pick Teddy, I'm all Teddy. I don't think Dylan Edwards is going to get the nod. Trust me. I, no, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm, I'm Dylan Edwards. I'm just saying I think. Fullbacks crucial. They've got to get oh, it right. Oh, it's so crucial. They've got to get it right. And but I think it's going to. I think Teddy it's going to pick. Informed, it's going to pick itself. Like it's going to pick itself. Yep. So it's all up to Teddy. If Teddy comes out and just plays busted, if he plays like he did this year, he's not going to get the nod. Well, judging by your predictions, and I don't want to give anything away too early because we'll finish with the winner of the grand yeah. final. I have a feeling Teddy will be part of your team. Just a little uh, teaser. I right. just love Teddy. Let's get to the daily M's, mate. Mace, my daily M, your yeah. daily M Who winner. Who do I pick? Hang on, let me go. My daily M, yeah. Am I saying it, you saying it? You're I'll saying, let you say you it, go. mate. But it'll be potentially the first back-to-back since Jonathan Thurston in 14-15. Yeah. KP. KP. I just think he. I, I think he's just reaching his peak right now. He's just entering the peak. I he's think got, he looks super comfortable. He's got right now through, with who he is. yeah, exactly. He's got through all the head knocks. He's got, you know, he's what his third, or fourth year up there in Newcastle. What, fucking, maybe maybe even longer. More. Maybe even yeah. Maybe settled in there, signed the big contract, settled right into Newcastle. That's his team. That's his town. I agree. And I always judge on the Daly M. If you're the superstar player in a mediocre team, mm, which they player. are, he's going to get Shout the three points. Newcastle. Loving Newcastle, <laughs> but you know they're not they're not they don't they're not stacked full of superstars yeah, like 100%. the Roosters and that. That's yeah. how the Daly M is, yeah. right? And then KP's going to he's going to gather all these points, bang bang. Like KP bang. last year, like Nico the year before, not a team full of stars yeah. at Sharks. Uh, Turbo, like that, mate. Turbo, he has Ches in there, but they don't have a lot. They didn't have a lot of stars as well, so yeah. it's definitely favoured towards those sorts of players. Yes, so you just got to pick that superstar player in the average sort of team. That's going to be about they're about yeah. the eight. Who's going to if he plays every single game? Yeah. they they sort of push for an eight spot. You don't know. You don't know what sort of year Newcastle can have. He missed like eight games. Last yeah, year. and eight he still, games. you know, give yeah. him give him twenty five games. Mm. <laughs> he's yeah. going to accumulate a shitload of points, he's and he's going to be up there. So, and he's very and, likely. And he too. is is top five best player in the game already. Correct, regardless. And he and he's you know what, and this plays a big part as well, especially with judges. Like, don't get it twisted. Yeah. If you're a likable, he's not a if you're a likable dude, that goes a long way as well. And a lot of yeah. these guys are, and. Um, I'm sure you know all the top tier players are, but yeah. um, it's good for the game when Callum Pong is playing well and it's, Newcastle's it's humming. Great for the game when Newcastle's killing it. Those, those scenes at the back end of the that year, that was bad. Twenty five thousand, great, Newcastle. so good for the game, man. I love that shit. All right, my one is he would be if you were able to bet on it. You can't bet on the Daly anymore. If he was, this one's a bit of a an easy one for me. Well, not an easy one, but this all guy right, would be right. the favourite, and it's one thing he hasn't done yet. He hasn't won one yet. Nathan Cleary. Daly M. So this is sort of counterproductive to your argument. It's like, it's like he should already have two or three in my head. Well, he probably the should injuries have. injuries and the suspensions fucked him. That's my point. With Nath, um, 
Suspensions have cost him. The TikTok of Doom cost him at the start of the season when Turbo won it. Remember? What are you TikToking? Oh, Turbo would have won that. And Turbo won it in 2021. Yeah. I dare say he would have been pretty close that mm. year. He's had two years now back to back where he's missed about five weeks of injuries. But in saying that, Kalen still missed a lot of footy and was able to do it. He's in a team full of stars. He's got to compete with Dylan Edwards. He's got to compete with Jerome Luai. He's got to compete with Fisher Harris. He's got to compete with Isaiah Yo. But I think at the end of the day, if it, if he finishes his career and he's still halfway through it, this is one thing he wants to knock off. And grab a I have a feeling he grab a couple by the end. Of I it. have a feeling the prince is going to be extra motivated this year with his. Do you think he thinks about God? Oh, I want to win a Dally M this year. Probably not. Probably I don't not. think. I don't it's think so. It's all about winning. Oh, in Premiership. But I think KP's not even thinking of that shit. None oh, of them. He's like, no, I want to win a comp. None you of the want boys to win a Premiership. Be. You just want to play your best possible footy week in week out. That's why I've gone Nath because I'm going to a guy that's consistent oh, mate. and he's in a good system. And although he's playing in a team full of stars, they're probably going to be top four. And probably. I think he's going to be an extra little bit more motivated this year because he's his good mate is moving on, Jerome Lawyer. So yeah. I think he's going to want to have a big mm. season for Jerome. I think this could Scary, be last that. dance Scary. sort of vibes for Penrith because yeah. they're losing so many players, man. Like you can't continue to keep up and stay up that high for that long. And uh, I'm going the Prince. Prince of Penrith. Is, uh, he, was, he, he, was in, he was in my top three there. Yep. All right, mate. Let's move to top try scorer. And I love this one from you. This probably would have been my pick if you didn't pick it. So I had to go yes. outside of what you'd gone. Oh, I knew you were thinking like that. Yeah. Khan Pereira. Yeah. My well, man. They've got plenty of points up. In, yeah, uh, the lots of points. He's on, that le he's on the left wing too, left isn't he? Left wing with Fozzie. That's when you, get all, you always get that ball for feeder. There's a lot of action going down that left side. And that's their power side. you got, bro, I think, Kelly's on the left center there as well. So he's got that good flick. But David Fafita is going to cause a lot of damage down that left edge, and he just backs up. You know, yep. so like broken play. Not sure where Brimson what center, what's Brimson could play left or right. I'm I, not sure. I that's another reason I love it as well. I think it's well, uh, a Kelly's because Kelly's a left arm carry. I think he'll be the, he'll be on the on the left center. Brian Kelly has and predominantly played left center. Yeah, because right. he left arm carry, good right palm, good flick. So who's played right? So Phil Sam. They've had a heap right? of like guys on the on the right. Yeah, they have. The guy, it's, no, it's no, been nothing consistent. Words, nothing yeah. consistent. Um, so I think Khan Pereira is going to get twenty plus. Yeah. So Khan Pereira had twenty four games last year. Finished on twenty, which was equal fourth. So Jermaine Asaka had twenty four. Dom Young had twenty three. Dylan Watson as Lesniak had twenty one. Yeah. Da DWZ is a good one. He had 21 in only 17 games. Jeez. Every other player had played 20 plus. Right. Fair so enough. He yeah. had a couple of like fours. Threes and fours. Oh, he had yeah. four against the Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And three against. That's what got him up. Three against the Manly when we were yeah. out there as yeah. well, remember? Or at least two. AJ is always going to be thereabouts. I think Greg Marzu is probably going to get even more this year with yeah. KP. If, if he ends up winning Dally M, then KP, yeah. Greg Marzu is going to be scoring a lot of tries. I am going. And my point scorers and try scorers are going to coincide. This is a fully reliable on a fully fit Tom Travoyage. I'm going Jason Saab on the right wing. Yeah, edge. okay. On the right wing. And the right wing. Ooh. So he plays with uh, Turbo, I think. Um, he's Ten got score obviously, right. obviously got Chez over there. You talked about big David Fafita causing some dramas. Yes. There's a guy yeah, called got, Amali Olakowatu yeah. on the you gotta right. you got to go to that. You've got to you look at your back row when you're thinking best. He's, he's holding the ball like this. There's a couple of times you just flicked a couple to Sabi. Yeah. Um, fully fit Jason Saab. I thought he I thought he was really good last year. He took another step up. He needs to take another step up. And uh, $17. So Khan Pereira is $15 with our friends and partners at yeah. Tab. And Jason Saab is $17. So both good value, I think. Yeah. Yeah, good. I think Sabi's got that because because Olakwatu has his right foot, the palm, the flick this way. Tommy putting that way. Sabi pushing like everyone's just pushing, mm. and Sabi's just like a big fucking gazelle on the end. I think they got some points in him this year. Oh, both mate, teams, plenty of points, yeah. uh, and potentially either Tolu Kola or uh, Ruben Garrick inside. I think yeah. I think they're the two centers. Yeah. So which which side they play is yet to be determined, but um, I think both good two yeah. centers that can get him some footing. Um, all right, mate, top point scorer. I'll go straight away because it coincides with my tip. I'm going Ruben Garrick. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be moving to the centres this year, I believe. Right. The, the, my mail is, and it's pretty good mail, Ruben Garrick is centres. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
A couple of players will be competing for that wing spot. Jackson Bolo, um, Tommy Taleo even, some good young tearaways. Raymond Vega. They just let uh, Christian Tui Pilotu go to the Dragons. Yeah. So um, iron sharpens iron. Got yeah. some good young uh, players fighting for a wing position. I think Gaz is going to play centres. I think Manly going to score a lot of points. Give me Ruben Garrick at $7. Right. I got – I think he had a down year compared to his standards. Val Holmes. He won it the year before? Yeah. I just you think, think he bounced got, back. Yeah. Yep. He scores shots, he kicks goals, he does like he does it all. And I think uh, that whole that whole system up there is going to get a shape. Yeah, and I, okay. th- I just think yep. he's going to be he's going to be the guy at the end of it that's going to get I reckon nearly 15 tries and he'll just kick goals everywhere because they'll be scoring he's a, a sharp lot shooter, more. Man. Yeah, cuz they cuz they'll be scoring a lot more points than they did this year. Yeah, I, I agree. just think I just think like he's He's one of those players, you know, he had a bit of a tumultuous off-season, all that sort of shit. He'd yep. want to give back to Townsville, right? Yeah, that's true. He's that sort of dude. And he's never been a guy that's ever been in the public eye like that no. before. So I, I he'd be fucking he's super pissed focused. off. He'd be super pissed off, yep. focused, and just going, I'm a fucking footy player, right? Yep. Well, Everyone just because up. I was going to let you go first on this one, mate, on this one. Making the eight from last year after missing the eight last year, I'm going Cowboys. They're $1.65 yeah. to make okay. the eight. They're my team that I'm highest about for all the reasons you said. I think they're going to score a lot of points. I think they're going to be a big bounce back. I love their roster. I think they're 22, 23 deep. Yeah. They've got really good competition pretty much at all spots. I love the Jay- – I reckon Jake Clifford is going to be one of the better underrated buys. I think he puts a lot of pressure on the 7, 6, and 1 to continue to perform okay. at the Cowboys. Uh, I love uh, a low-key signing in Viliami Vilea as well. I think he yep. can be a real tearaway in the centres. It's got to put some pressure on that position as well with Petter moving on. And their back row rotation is probably the best in the league. Crazy. Maybe them and the Roosters. The best. Yeah, so, yeah easy. Um, I'm going the Cowboys to make the eight after missing it last year at $1.65. Mace, yep. who Mine is the Titans. I just thought the Titans had – they had a year where they were sitting in the top four. They were sitting at like fifth and sixth like most of the year. They lost games when they had ridiculous leads. Like, and I just think with the coaching up there and Fozzie probably heading towards his last couple of years and just like with the spine And understanding have, Desi too, which yeah, is important. And Des, that's the main thing mm. is Des Hasler. Mm. Like he's a winner. You know what I mean? He's going to implement a lot of like structure up there defensively. Discipline. And discipline. And that's where they fall down. Yeah, I agree. All the little things he's going to implement into that team, if they can nail those, they'll win those games. Then they'll be in the top eight. Yep. They're a top eight team. The forward pack that they got, Fodawaker, Tino, On David paper, Fafita, their forward Fermor, pack would match anyone's. Isaac Lou. Yep. You know, like it's like that's a very well-balanced pack. It's well balanced. They've got workers, they've got big dogs, guys can play big minutes, everything like that. But they yeah. haven't proved it week to week yet. No, they yeah. haven't. But that's why Des, that's why they bought Des. Well, that's why they've got good value, Mace. I know you're not a big punter yeah. as well, but the price for them to make the eight, two dollars fifty. So the yeah. punters still have their concerns about it. You would it, be concerned. But I think it's great value for a lot of the reasons you said. They've got the talent. They just haven't had maybe the coach to implement the discipline for them to go to the next yep. step. Um, this one's a bit of a downer before we get to the the uh, the big dance, uh, our winner. But to miss the eight after making it last year, you think a team potentially could drop out? Yes, I think Canberra. I just think everyone fell over last year. Mm. Like who didn't make the eight? Manly didn't make the eight. Cronulla didn't make the eight. Parramatta no, Cronulla, did. Cronulla did. Um, Parramatta, Parramatta, so Parramatta Cowboys, didn't make. Rabbits. South Sydney. Like they all fell over the Cowboys, and I'm just like, well, you know, Canberra just will just keep going. You know what Canberra's going to do? They're going to be competitive every single week. But if those other teams are on, which I think they are, like Parramatta's going to be more focused and South and yeah, kick and in the butt uh, for all yeah, those teams. a bit of a kick in the ass. Like they'll be. This preseason will be massive for these guys. Raiders win heaps of games because they're dogs. Yeah. And they get in a dog fight. Bunch. So if you don't yeah. turn up with the right attitude, then you're going to get done and Raiders yeah. will get you. But I think worry about their back five. I worry about their back five. I worry about their halves. halves. Yeah, big time. You know, like their forwards are going to match anyone. They've got Horsebro. When you've got the Horsebro in there and you've got Joey Tarpane and Big Papa. Big Papa. And Whitehead. They're yeah. going to fucking bash you. They're going to bash you. Mm. Like it's it's – that's their plan. But and then big play question marks. Play, yeah, there's question marks with their halves, and you know, like, but and I just think these other teams are going to go up, and they're going to be still fighting for it. Yeah, I agree. They'll be fine. I think they'll be like nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, they'll be still fighting. Like when it comes to around 24, 25, 20, they'll be still there. I yeah. just think they just might miss out. That's the reason. No I disrespect, d- Ricky. Yeah, 
He loves sticks. Don't I know. Well, you gave him a good rap on Monday, so sometimes you got to. And and it's his coaching that gets you because when there's yeah. those awful days when you don't, when you're playing Canberra in round twenty fucking two, yeah. just after Origin, you got Canberra, and they're like, yeah, fucking get down here, <laughs> playing the Roosters, <laughs> playing pa- some Sydney yeah. team. North Queensland's got to come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you mentally got to go. All right, let's get him. That's yeah. where they get all these little points. They do at the cu- accumulate them at the back end of the year because it's fucking freezing down no there. No one wants to play. No one wants to play. You're not packing your jeans. You're on the bus straight away, and you're going home. Um, and and you like how I just made it make because you, you put nearly everyone in the top eight, so I didn't make you, I didn't make you, I didn't make you pick your top no. eight. You noticed that? No, I no. just I gave, I gave you two options, so I made it nice and easy for you this time. All right, my one mate to miss the eight, and everyone, <laughs> I get the comments all the it? time. Everyone, thinks oh, I'm a you, shark I know, hater. I know, you're gonna pick sharks again. Oh no, Every, everyone thinks I'm a it's shark hater, but let me explain my reasons. Come on, again through the system that I picked when I was talking about the Tanyola Paseca, I went through the team. And key positions, Will Kennedy. I like Will Kennedy. I don't love Will Kennedy as a fullback, as in he's not a top five fullback for me. Uh, Nico Hines, he's probably the only one in the team who I love and I think is a legitimate top five at his position. Then you go to Hooker. Brayley, I like Brayley. Don't love him. Then you go to Finucane, getting a little bit old. Love Finucane as a player back in the day. He's old. He's suspended, and he's getting a been little. Been around for a minute. He's he? been around for a minute, though. He's been, around, I think, two thousand and maybe ten, eleven, Fuck or maybe God. Desi's first year. Twelve, 12 was his first I know year. that. He's so that's a, maybe twelve, that. thirteen years. Jeez. And that voice is getting croakier, so that's always a sign that he's getting a little bit older. Um, front Still rowers, can't sing, can't sing. Front rowers, Tuba Rudolph, Hamlin, Uele. Like I said last episode, they need to take that next step. One of them needs to become a premier front rower, and they are capable of it. They just haven't done it. Mm. In the positions that I love them or the players that I love in the team that I think are top-tier players, I don't find them as valuable as others. I love their wing combination. Yeah, the best. Mulatalo and Katoa yeah. are probably a top three, four wing, com- wing combination. I love Britton Nicola yeah. in the centres. I love Jesse Ramian in the centres. I mean, sorry, I love Britton Nicola in the back row. I love Jesse Ramian in the centres. Even Talakai as a, as a combination, I think. But when I looked at those positions and how I don't prioritise them, yeah. then I've just got to check myself on how I view the Sharks. So, um, What about collectively as a team when you bring them all together? Well, see, that's when they average out yeah, and go a little bit higher. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why, I look, that's why I look at it. So that's right. why I think the punters are, are mixed on it as well. Yeah. So do, everyone agrees with you, dollar sixteen to not make the top eight, the Raiders. But dollar eighty, it's basically a coin flip on the Sharks, whether yeah. they the, the punters think the Sharks are going to make it. And... Uh, Again, like if Sharks make the top four, I won't be surprised yeah. just because I'm not putting them in the eight. I think across the board, they're probably better balanced. Two years ago, they come second, remember? Craig Fitzgibbon, I think he's a young, great ascending yeah. coach. And I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to look at this from – I've attacked this preseason a little bit differently and, and, I've, and I'm viewing it. I want, I want to, I'm going to run this method that I've tried this year yeah. and see how it works for next year. I could be proved wrong. I'm going to run that method when we're picking teams to win. Yeah. Not, it's hard to pick the eight. Yeah. So I pick sixteen people, sixteen teams in the eight. Because <laughs> you love you so know? many players. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because but but when I when I'm going when we're going head to head, that's what I'll be going at. Yeah. Like all the priority positions that in my head I know win games because the coaching is pretty similar these days. Mm. It's just about how it's just about how how these players play every single weekend. You need your big dogs fine every single weekend. All right. We'll use that thought process and give me your grand final winner. And why? My grand final winner. Like, I just didn't want to go with the easy option in Penrith. I just don't think – I think they've come down a little bit, right? Losing Critter and a couple other outside backs Spencer and everything Lenu. like Spencer Lenu. I'm going the Roosters. Mm. I just don't I think it. – it's a, not that sort of club that goes down for this lot. They haven't made the grand final since, what, 2019? Yeah, 2019. So 19? they won 18 19. So they won 18 19. 19. They did too. And Big they've been fucking 19. around for a little bit. They've been trying to find the new seven. Cooper Cronk's gone. You know, like they've got these new players coming through. Like, they just have a really good balance. You've got Hargraves, you've got Lindsay Collins. Right? They've got Spencer good young Lenny, players that had the three back years rollers, experience. You know, you've got Crichton. You've the butchers. Got the, the Butcher Wong. Boys, Wong. Tupanua. Sam Walker needs to go to another level. Kiri, need, Kiri under, understand, he just come back from an ACL the year after. This mm. year is going to be his year. Yep. Then the back five, you just got to do your best. They're yep. just superstars everywhere. The bench, they've got, they've got over 22, 23 players. And they're going to be good. And if they figure it out, they yep. figure the spine out, which I think they think Holbrook is the key to this. Yep. Defensively, they're going to be great. 
right? But they're going to have to have that nine, seven, six, one combination because it's very hard. The only one who's very who's structured in that whole thing is probably Kiri a little bit. Sam Walker plays off the cuff. Not, Brandon Smith plays off the cuff. Teddy plays off the cuff. Yep, they're I not agree. like Melbourne where it's just like Smith, Cronk. Uh, just say the six Slater. could be anywhere Even but Slater. Slater. Very, uh, Slater, but Slater had, had those massive curves around the back. He'd be coming through the middle. Like Teddy's not like that. Billy was still super structured though. Super Even though structured. It, no, he looked like he a, was just like he'd just wait behind the play of the ball. He'd see where you're going. He'd see who he, he was so like fucking cerebral. Like I, he'd I, know where you were, like all the middles were and where to attack and where they were going. And he'd either pop up on the inside or right around the corner because he's that quick. I did a podcast with Blake Green actually early a couple of years ago and he talked about his development because remember Greeny was come back yeah. from the UK and his career was in a bit of a limbo mm. and then he came back and obviously he spoke highly about Cooper Cronk but he said Billy Slater identifying numbers yes. at the back for kicking and an attack helped him more than anyone. Everything. And he played with Cam... Billy and Cooper yeah. for those couple of years at the Storm. Yeah, so if they can figure that out, because they're pretty, they're quite young. I mean, Kiri's getting a little bit older. but He's, he's still got a couple not, of years still, left. He's still not 30. Jared, like, couple yeah. of years left. Yeah, Coops, Sam Walker's the dude, left. mate. He's 21 years old. You've got to hand him the keys. Mm. Brandon Smith and him need to be on the same page. Teddy just does, you know, he just needs to get back to where he was a couple of years ago. If the, if, if the Roosters are killing it, Teddy scoring tries through the middle five, of the field yeah, by that, through support. That's yeah. his best work. Like that back five, no one's fucking with that. Mm. Like Billy Smith, but who's gonna who's gonna be that back five? Like who's gonna be who's gonna miss out? You got Billy Smith, Suli, Tupo, like Teddy's fullback. Um, who's the other? Who's the other? Uh, Tupo, uh, Joey Dom Manu, Young. Dom like, Young. and Dom Young. Yeah, someone's missing out. It's probably Billy Smith because he's not on that much yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's not he's not on a million dollars. Like yeah. you got to pay. I want Suli to play. He's on. You know, he's on more money and he's probably got more talent. So I want to put him at left center. Originally, I thought Billy Smith was going to be it, but the more you think about it, yeah. the, it's it's more about the runs you got on the board. I think Billy Smith will eventually win the position by the end of the year. And someone be, getting, and I mean, uh, touch would no one does, but like they all of fire, course. they all fire. It's going to be an aerial assault. Yeah, I think Billy Smith's the sort of guy that you sort of go into the season going, yeah, we've probably got more talented players, but then he rips in throughout the year and wins the spot, and then yeah. it'd be very hard to take it back from mm. him. Um, I love it, mate. Roosters, good pick. I'm also going away from the favourites. Now, I really wrestled. Obviously, Penrith are, are dominant. And for some people, they might be an easy pick, but this is more a, an addition by subtraction thought process with my pick. It's also the reason I didn't go to the Broncos, even though I love the star power on the team. They lost some fucking dogs, man. Oh, Both teams lost time, some man. dogs. Big and time. I looked at a team that didn't necessarily lose any really big names, didn't really gain any big names as well, by the way. But they've got championship DNA. They've got a championship coach. And I went back to my system again. So my system is I looked at the key positions. Fullback, se seven, six, hooker, elite front rower, and a lock who was probably the most underwhelming in the team out of all of them. But fully fit, Ryan Pappenhausen I knew is, you were a, fucking going is a top six fullback. Fully fit. Yeah. Munster's the best six in the game. I can argue with that. I could argue that with anyone. Easy. Jerome Hughes is a top three halfback in the game. Yes. yes. Harry Grant's the best hooker yes. in the game. Nelson Asafa Solomona is a top tier prop, even yes. though he comes off the bench. Yep. He's their dude. And Josh King is a toilet that I'm happy with at 13. So I went through that system and I was looking at it's fair. and I was looking at the balance of the rest of the team. I think there's going to be some competition that they probably haven't had in a couple of years. A few players maybe got comfortable last year. They made a big statement by moving on Josie Olam. Mm. And I think Melbourne Storm in a in a in a year when everyone might take a step back, I want to go with a team that I know during periods when people don't want to play, specifically Origin. Melbourne yeah, yeah. keep ticking away wins. What about if Belly comes out and goes, I don't want to, I'm not coaching. There's Even another better. one. There's Even another better. drive. The last fucking dance, all that Belly shit. Belly last dance. And I look and I think that'll drive them to the end. That, that might get them over the top. Yeah. So also, I like it. I like it. Well, that was a part of my. So I looked in, and I'm, and this is obviously we got connections at Melbourne as yeah. well. We know players, but if you're looking at it from an outsider, there's a guy called Jason Rolls who was part of the system for a long time. Yeah, he went to the Roosters, also did yeah. some apprenticeship there. The Dragons' job become available. He's a Dragons legend, junior, yeah, legend, junior. Yeah. He comes back to the Melbourne Storm. He's now an assistant coach there. So, I don't Ryan's know. Ryan's on the wall. I, I has just, to be. I'm just looking at it. I'm going. Well, he knows Robbo ain't going anywhere for 10 years. Robbo's locked in. Big, big shoes to fill. 
Last dance belly. Big shoes to fill, but like with belly. Last dance belly. I, I think so. Twelve bucks, thirteen bucks. The storm. Maybe because of the new rule and the, the concussions. I'm out. Yeah, belly's out. Can't for the, deal with yeah, it. Hundred percent. He would have. He would have seen that rule and go, no. Royals, he'd come back Royals in. Royals, come in, mate. Take the reins, mate. I'm done. One last dance. So, um, yeah, specifically around the key positions, when I looked at him, I, like, I, like I started it. ticking I like him it. off. Um, I really hope Pappy can get back to doing his best. I'm excited that he came out and said in uh, comments recently when he yeah. got interviewed that – uh, he's going to be playing some trials. He's going to play one of the two trials, which is great signs for Pappy. He, uh, he's, he's, and and even speaking to to Pappy, uh, and because I was at Money's wedding during the off yeah. season as well, and it was almost like that injury at the back end was a blessing in disguise because it gave his knee more time yeah. to recover as well. So you never playing, want to get injured man. like I just that. Want to, yeah, that everyone's heart sunk when we saw that. Yeah. So God, because I was thinking his career's over. So he like, can't come back. He can't come back. The mental trauma, all that sort of stuff. And he's a bit of a free spirit as well. Like I don't think football's everything to him. Yep. Like some people, he could, you know, he could be like, all right, well, if I'm not coming back, I'm not going through that shit. More to life than football. He's very good. I think life away. Perspective. Right. perspective. But, but he puts things in perspective. He's not a person who's just like tunnel vision footy and that's all I am. And my last thing before we move on, before we finish the episode, I love it when young guns are coming through and really pushing it. Sua Falongo. Yeah, I like that. Kid. I think that's that X factor. He's that that's sort of that. X factor that's coming through. That's going to keep everyone on their toes. Positions like you, Melbourne are, have been like Money and Jerome Hughes are their halves. They started off playing fullback and shit for the for the yeah. for the Melbourne Storm. Bellamy ain't afraid to move a player out of position if he mm. thinks it's going to keep the rest of the team in check. Nico Hines played fourteen. Multiple positions, kept everyone in check, kept everyone playing top tier footy down there at Melbourne for a long yeah. time. So he's just going to be there. Melbourne Storm, 13 It's going to be there, 14. There we go. That's my predictions. Uh, Remember, what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call gamblinghelp.org.au. Sorry, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au or call 1-800-858-858. Everyone have a good weekend. We'll see you at the Super Bowl if we see you at the Super Bowl. And we'll be dropping next Tuesday.